So thank you all for uh, coming together this evening. I really want to start by thanking uh, the city council members, and in particular, I want to thank uh, city council president, Jack Young. He has shown an incredible amount of leadership, and uh, because of that, because of his leadership and the, uh, the, the courage, I believe, of the council, we are here. To, uh, to acknowledge the milestone that we have reached today. After healthy public debate, I'm pleased that the City Council has approved the authorization for the TIF bonds required to move the Harbor Point project forward. The TIF bonds will pay for much needed public infrastructure, they'll pay for streets, lighting, utilities, as well as public parks. All things that do not exist today. This is a project which I believe keeps, keeps Baltimore moving forward on two big goals of my administration, creating jobs for Baltimore City residents and growing our, our city by 10,000 families. There's been a lot of misinformation out about Harbor Point, but the facts could not be clearer. This is a great project for the citizens of Baltimore. Harbor Point means a fresh start for a long, blighted, and vacant site along our city's waterfront. It means more than 17,000 jobs for hard-working men and women across our city. It means an opportunity to keep growing our city by more than 2,000 new residents towards our goal of making Baltimore home to 10,000 new families. And it benefits our current residents, including nearly 10 acres of new public parks, a new public promenade, new contracting opportunities for women and minority-owned businesses. And as I say that, I want to thank my entire economic development team inside of City Hall and outside of City Hall. I want to thank Mayor's Office of Employment Development, particularly Karen Sitnik and, and her work for uh, work, working hand in hand with the development team to make sure that the jobs were created will benefit Baltimore City residents and that we are doing our part up front to make sure that, we, that they have the training, our citizens have the training in place to be ready for those opportunities. And it means an average of $18 million per year in new revenue for the city that could be invested in our schools, invested in public safety, and investing in making every community of Baltimore better. So again, let me thank all who have made this, uh, this project possible. Again, thank you to uh, Mike B and the, the development team. I'm looking forward to, you know, now that we have this one, um, you know, close to under wraps as far as our process is concerned, I'm looking forward to, to um, more projects as we continue to grow Baltimore together. And with that, I'm going to open it up for questions. Uh, Mayor, uh, mm -hmm. I saw an interesting quote from you this weekend. Um, you said that uh, time would tell if Mr. Beatty would, uh, or Ms. Beatty, right, mm -hmm. um, would be in the same league as, as uh, Jim Rouse. And um, so, just so you know, I didn't. I didn't create. I, I would, that was in response to a question about uh, Rouse and a few others. Is, is, is that putting too much pressure on him? Yeah, yeah. I suggest you. If that pressure was, if that pressure is uh, too much, uh, you should t uh, you should thank your colleague at the Sun because she was the one who suggested uh, he being. That was it was. Um, who did that article? Gee, yeah, yeah. That was her suggestion. Okay. All right. So the pressure is the pressure is from your colleagues. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Beatty, um, when will the ground be broken on the Harbor Point project? Well, the first building is the you want to come second up? building. Yeah, come on. <clears throat> now the second building at Harbor Point after the Morgan Stanley building, which is there, will be the Exelon um, headquarters, and we will break ground up this fall. Um, we, we, you know, it's been a challenging process to get through with the leadership of our mayor um, and the fantastic leadership of our city council president and the entire council, uh, we've gotten this far. And I think we have some historic um, things to do going forward still. We've made great agreements on working with Sharon Pinder on NDEWBE, with Karen Sitnik on local hire at the council president's direction to hire not just jobs, but local jobs, and really focusing on housing as well with our inclusionary housing plan to do more. And I think what we need to do now is go forward and build a project that is really great for Baltimore, um, but continue to be thoughtful about how to work with our communities, how to do more and more in our communities, and as much as we can. 
Um, you know, the, the Jim Rouse comment is a really tough one to live up to. Um, but I think by um, working hard and having a lot of input from a lot of other people around our city is what will get our city going in the right direction and keep it going in the right direction. And we're excited to be just a small part of it. And it's, you know, Baltimore is a fantastic city to be in. I think we need to be more aspirational in general because we've got such great things and great people here. And I'm excited again to be a small part of it and to help move things forward if I can. Do you one more question, there, there was a lot of uh, criticism about the process, <coughs> protesters, etc. Um, is there anything that we can learn um, from this month long process? Anything that can be improved? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Jack. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, to be perfectly honest with you, this process has been vetted more than any um, project that have ever come before this council. Um, you know, we have a series of um, hearings on Harbor Point as it relates to Perkins Home. Then we have a hearing on Harbor Point as it relates to the TIF. Then we had um, a work session that turned into a hearing. So I think this thing has been vetted really, really well. And I think we heard everybody loud and clear. And I know that Mr. Uh, Beattie and his group heard me loud and clear that um, we expect these jobs to be for Baltimore City residents. And those jobs after the project is built, we want to get people trained to get those jobs as well. You know, so I think this is going to be a wonderful project. And I, I stand behind it 100%. Um, my first comment was jobs, 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 and that's what it is. Jobs, jobs, jobs. We get people working, you see less crime. You see uh, uh, families being reunited. Because, you know, one thing that disconnects a family is when you have the wife working and the husband is not working. It causes problems. Um, the kids don't get the uh, things that they need. So this project is going to provide jobs for people who live in the city of Baltimore. And One quick question, Madam Mayor. I, I'm Maureen Daly. I have the honor of actually working on your staff and community outreach some years ago in New York City Council President. And I've since been appointed to the Inclusionary Housing Board because of my work I do on housing. And I just wanted to ask if you, Madam Mayor, could speak a little broadly about uh, your vision for housing and new families. Uh, we, we very much appreciate that the city is supporting the raise of the minimum wage, and we recognize that our working, many of our working families are not earning enough to afford market rate mm -hmm. housing. And we haven't heard enough, I think, from uh, the city about what their vision is for so much of our population, as we know, the, the cost of, uh, of market rate housing and what people are earning are out of sync. And uh, what's your vision for, for some of those? So I, th I think it's... It Two things. First, thank you for the question. And second, you know, you can talk about a vision, but you, you to me, um, you can spend a lot of time talking about a vision and talking about a dream, but what have you done? And I think the work that I've done uh, coming up on the third anniversary of Vacants to Value speaks to my vision, which is that we have investment in our neighborhoods, that we have neighborhoods that have been neglected for decades. And uh, because of the targeted enforcement, because of the targeted investment, we're tearing down blighted properties so people who are cleaning their steps every day and collecting trash in the neighborhood don't have to look at rotted out uh, vacant homes that they know will never be, never come back. And we're creating green spaces, community planned green spaces in some neighborhoods where they've had to look at vacant lots. We are uh, clearing out, um, you know, doing targeted demolition to make way for affordable housing in our neighborhoods. You know, so when we talk about building 15 new schools, we're also talking about building housing, you know, affordable housing around them so the schools can be a, a catalyst for development. And we've laid the groundwork by doing the demolition. You can talk about dreams and vision all you want, but what have you done? And I think my track record when it comes to investment in the, in the community and investment in affordable uh, housing speaks for me. And I am uh, committed to making investments that are catalytic, smart investments. I just left. I took my little Under Armour pin off because I didn't want to send the, you know, the, anyway. So I took my Under Armour. Usually I had on my, my, my Baltimore flag for the vice president early, but I had to trade it out because I came from Easterwood. 
And what we did there was a catalytic investment. We created a partnership with a, a fraternity, an organization in West Baltimore to open a long closed recreation center. We created a partnership with this organization, reopened that rec center. They, they have programming in there, it's an active space, and because of that, then Under Armour came in and redid the adjacent basketball court. Catalytic investment, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we can see all over our, our city when we take the, when we are careful and strategic about smart investments, and that's what's happening at Harbor Point. It is a catalytic project, it is a smart investment that's gonna create jobs and spur more development. And that's what I wanna see in Baltimore. I talked to the Vice President today, and you know he's, he loves Baltimore, his family's from Baltimore, and you know he's he's you know we like to call him many people probably call him Uncle Joe. So Uncle Joe, uh, he says to me, he says I really like what I see every time I come back to Baltimore. I'm seeing uh, Baltimore getting better and better and growing and growing. And I looked at him and I said, we're not done. We're not done. Uh, we're going to continue to make smart investments so we can grow the city downtown and in our neighborhoods. It's not one or the other. It's one Baltimore. And I think with the leadership of our council president and the courage of our uh, city council members, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah. All right, guys. Wouldn't this be the first time to the uh, 100 year